So I previous, I'm in cohort one. So I'm just also helping out with this third cohort just because this book is a bit difficult for me. So I need a second revision just to make sure that I'm understanding things right. So, so what's the purpose of book club for those who are not familiar with how R4DS is working is uh, usually when we have a book club for each book. So this is a book by uh, Garrett James and this is the second edition. So the second edition is slightly different from the first edition from what I heard. I have not read through the first edition, so I'm not sure what's in the first edition. But the second edition, I think it has a lot more of the Bayesian statistics because I'm right now like halfway in the book. So I realized it has a lot more Bayesian stats than it goes more beyond linearity. So it doesn't move only talks about those linear models. It also, also talk more about classification models a lot. So our book club meeting will be weekly. So unless there's very major holidays or everyone else agree to postpone it, most probably we will have our meetings every week. <laughs> so, um, okay. Um, so each week, um, how is going on? We have, yes. Sorry to interrupt. I just had a quick question before we go ahead. Um, mm. From your perspective, um, is this going to be more R focused or statistics focused? Uh, yeah, I was going to talk about that. So the book is, um, I think it's half half on stats and also half on. So how we've been doing it for the first cohort is we spend about one week, someone will present about the theory part. Then we will spend another week on the R labs. So maybe like half half. So one week on theory and one week just on the basic stuff. Then you have another week where we just go through the labs exercises. Because um, from what I'm being experiencing, the book chapters is a bit complicated then, and it's actually quite long for certain chapters, except chapter five or maybe chapter one and chapter seven. <laughs> Those are the shorter chapters, but the rest of the chapters, they can be quite long. So what we've been doing is we spent about two weeks just talking about theories, then one week on the lab. So it's about three weeks for the longer chapter. Does that answer your question? <laughs> but we can definitely discuss like how you guys want to do it. I think each cohort will be slightly different. So it depends on what you guys prefer. Like we will go with just what the majority prefers. So um, back to uh, the book club meetings. So each week we will need a volunteer to present a chapter. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, because some of the chapters can be quite long, then you guys might have a uh, work commitment, like study commitment, or maybe like family commitment. So um, if you want, you guys can share the chapters instead of like one person present one chapters, uh, maybe you can share the chapters, you look at the dates and then you decide which one. I'll really encourage people to present because that's the best way to learn because uh, you don't have to prepare the notes because I cohort one and cohort two, they actually have prepared the notes, which is on this book. So if you just go to our R4DS book club dash ISLR, these are the, where all the notes are and you can get the notes and you can also refer back to the YouTube videos for previous meetings. You don't have to prepare, but you just use the notes here to present. I feel like when you are presenting, you force yourself to read. So then you remember things better as well. So it's more like having a shared responsibility. So presentation wise, um, it will consist of like review of materials. We have a usually review of materials will be take about half an hour, 30 minutes. Then you have a discussion if, if there's a, maybe a sub chapter that someone, like someone feels is a bit 
difficult to understand or comprehend, then we might have a slightly longer discussion, but we try to keep all this review and discussion to in an hour because you wouldn't want to go to other book clubs um, time slots. Then maybe following the week where we have reviewed the material, we will do a lab practice. So the book right now, the lab practices are all in base R. Uh, someone has been talking about using the Emil's book as the supplement. So Emil is using the tiny models. So we can do maybe like half, half, like depends on what you guys prefer. If you want to do more of a base art or you want to use more of a tidy models. Because if we, we decided to go with the tidy models, then for our subsequent, all those lab practices, we can just go with the tidy models. So information on how to present is all in the GitHub repo on this link. So all the presentation, including the meeting today will be recorded and we will just upload it to the YouTube channels. So before that, um, let me share. So if you go to the Slack, right? There's a cohort tree sign up. So for our next meeting, which is chapter two, which is quite soon, do we have any volunteers for that? So chapter two is more on the theoretical not parts. So it doesn't really have a lot lab, even for the labs, it's quite basic. But, and do we have any volunteers, like anyone wants to do chapter two? Or maybe you guys can even start to sign up for chapter three, four, five, and six. So the dates I actually have posted all these things. Uh, yeah. And we do not have, I think, I'm not sure about this week for March 14. I believe it's a daylight saving thing. So we might not have a class, but I need to check with John whether we are not having a class. Oh, sorry, I'm sharing screen. Ah, oh, okay, someone posted. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't see the chat. So please do sign up. Like I highly encourage people to sign up for chapter two, which is next week. You don't have to prepare the notes. The notes are in the book. <laughs> so you just go through it here. It's this statistical learning. Next, um, so we will be using the second edition. You can obviously read the first edition, but I will just encourage you to just read the second edition. So we try to cover one chapter for every two weeks. I think that's the best idea. But for certain chapters, like shorter chapters, I think we can cover the theory and the lab in one week. Okay, so we will not have any, we will not cancel the meeting. We will have meetings every week unless for the daylight saving week. So introduction for first chapter, I'm not sure if everyone has read the chapters. So for our first chapter, it's just very basic. It talks about, so what are the various types of statistical learning? So then they also, the objective is also to understand why this book is useful for you. Then they also list out some of the mathematical notation that is being used throughout the book, then the layout and also type of the data. So first part is talking about what is statistical learning. So statistical learning is what we usually use for machine learning framework. So it combines all those like statistics as well as some functional analysis to make connections between area that you want to investigate. Okay, so we have two types, either supervised learning or unsupervised learning. So I think we are most, I'm more familiar with supervised learning where we actually build a model to predict an output using an input. So let's say we have to predict which from like predict which from the age, education or year, or maybe you want to predict a market directions, whether it's going good or going to the bad way from the previous day's performances. 
So unsupervised learning is more about where you have these inputs, but you don't have a specific output. So you're just looking at the clusters, you're looking at the relationship from what you have. So you're just finding all these structures things. So one is identify like clusters within the cancer cell lines. Cancer cell lines, sorry. <clears throat> So why we want to use this ISLR book? So I think they argue that ISLR book is a good transition for you to go from statistical learning, from an academic field to a mainstream field. For me, I feel like it didn't really apply because as I was reading the book, I realized ah, it has a lot, you need a lot, it involves a lot of mathematical knowledge. It involves a lot of statistics. So for me, it is not that laid back as I assume it would be. So machine learning is useful for everyone. I assume because regardless of which field you are in, we all need some stats. Let's say we want to make some predictions or we want to make some inter uh, inference. So the best way is you just learn it enough to use it responsibly. Then at the, towards the end of each chapter, we always have these R labs. So that's how you can apply theories that you have learned for each chapters into the, uh, hopefully into the R codes, then see how it works. Then they have a number of notations. You don't have to remember what I find useful is I, as I was reading through uh, the chapters, I always refer back to the chapter one for the notations. But I think sometimes it works better for others as in, you might find easier to just Google the notation, <laughs> mathematical notation. So, but how the normal ones are the N, are the number of rows, the number of observations, let's say for each participants or what. Then the P, the predictors are the number of variables or the features which is are on the columns. So you how it goes is as you read through other chapters two, three, four, you just come back to the chapter one to refer any mathematical notations that you're not familiar with. So there are some like familiar symbols. They assume we all know but but unless you are in the I feel like unless you do mathematics all the time you wouldn't know like for example this e symbol which is more of a element is an element of i remember like seeing this in when i was learning math in my high school so it's like an e symbol which they assume is an element i'm not sure how to pronounce it i just call it e and and this fancy r which stands for real numbers <laughs> So um, what actually this book or what have we gotten ourselves into? So this book is just a collection of all these modern statistical methods for modeling, making predictions from real world data. So it's a mix in between stats and also the practice application. So it contains all these R labs and it will lead you through different methods, different statistical methods to analyze your data. But the two main data that we will be using most of the time, two types of modeling. So either you'll be doing more of a regressions where your dependent variables are usually the continuous type, or you're doing more of a classic classification problems where your dependent variables are usually those categorical type. So chapter two is a bit dry where we talk about terminology, main concepts. Chapter three, four, we talk about linear methods. Then uh, chapter four, I think it was more of classification. So chapter three is more linear regression. Chapter four is a classification. Chapter five, that's the short chapter where we talk about resampling. I think that's a very new concept to me, like resampling, because I don't use it a lot for my research. But that's a good one for those uh, who's not familiar with stats. Then chapter six onwards, there are more of like modern updates to the linear methods, how they talk about K4, all those kind of stuff. 
then chapter seven is beyond linear models. So um, I would encourage you guys to do this install package uh, ISLR because as when you need to present, let's say you want to make some minor edits to the notes that we have in this book, um, you can, you are actually allowed to make the edits as long as it's not two major edits. Like let's say you see a sentence, then you feel that you can paraphrase it in a better way, in a more concise way. Like please feel free to make the edits if you were to present that week. So what you can do is just go to the install packages ISLR2. Then you can just install it. Then this will download all the dependencies that you actually need for this book. Now, if you do need to, I think, remove, I think you can just remove, but uh, this is remove packages. Um, I'm not sure. I have not removed my packages. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, you can also install the book club, the GitHub one. I think this is the one, the codes to install it. But I'm not sure how you want to remove packages. I think you have to use this function remove remove dot packages. Then maybe in the quotation ISLR2 if you want to remove it. Not sure how, but um I'm anyone has comments on how to do this install packages or remove packages. So what I did was slightly different. I go to the GitHub and actually clone it to my R Studio. So instead of using these install packages, I actually clone the whole thing. So that's how I get my updates every week. I was thinking about to ask that because for my, I mean, I'm using R Studio and for me, it was telling me um package ISLR2 is not available for this version of R. <laughs> yeah, uh, I have not tried the install packages, but it's supposed to work. <laughs> yeah. I assume it will just work. But uh, what I did was I actually just come to here, like I just clone it, then I open it with my R Studio. I find that that's easier for me as well. Okay. So yeah, I suppose I will do that too. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Then, Thank you. Okay. Uh, oh, some useful resources. So these are the resources that we have accumulated from the two cohorts before us. So the first one, this book comes from the stats learning. You can just go to the book page. And if you just want to download the PDF, this, is, this will take you straight to the website where you can download the first edition and the second edition, the PDF. There's also a course is being taught by the author of the book, I believe, on at X. So you can sign up for this course if you, for free, if you audit the class, I believe. Then, all the channels, uh, then um, all the videos for our meetings will be posted here on the playlist YouTube channel. Then for each chapter, because we have the lab, um, so towards the end of the chapters, there actually there are two sections. So one section will be more on like testing your theoretical knowledge and one section will be on the labs. So if you click on this applied solution link, it will bring you back to the codes for the applied exercises. So, but this one, I think they are in base R. So what we've been doing is Emil also has the same thing, which is, uh, wait, no, let me see. If you go to ISLR tidy models, if you go to Emil's book, 
I think he has added all the quotes that for each chapter. So this one, I think you guys can use this one. Chapter two doesn't have lab, but chapter three onwards, we have all these lab exercises. So he actually wrote a book, a, a tidy model equivalent books for the ISLR. So if you refer to the ISLR PDF, you'll be using base R. Uh, but if you want, we can also use Emil's book for our lab exercises. So we will discuss this towards the end after I finish the presentation. Uh, what else? Ah, so what is being covered in the book is the newer version, the second edition, covers more unsupervised learning, but it also covers a lot more of like naive-based, generalized linear models, a lot more variations. That, that's what I found. Uh, we have about 13 chapters. Today we have about eight participants. I think each of us can take up about one chapters because we don't have, we are such a small cohort. So then someone else might need to present it twice. So look at those dates, then choose the dates that you are like most likely to be free or the months that you are more likely to be free. So as uh, I mentioned earlier, we have supervised learning, unsupervised learning, regression versus classification problems. So what are linear regressions for those very unfamiliar with stats or someone who needs a refresh? So regression is more about where uh, in this book, what is interesting, they also introduce something like called the k-nearest neighbors. So it depends on the number of k-fold that you have. We, the way that we classify models will be slightly different. So for classification, we use, they talk about logistic regression. I believe this is in chapter four. Then also we have linear discriminant analysis, uh, LDA, also in chapter 14. Then resampling method. Uh, this is something I learned, cross validations. So they have like three methods actually for resamplings and they talk about the advantages and disadvantages of those resampling methods in chapter five. Then follow up, you have all these linear model selections, those more advanced uh, linear models. Then they talk about how this could be a better modeling over the standard linear regression because the standard linear regressions is we are only using a straight line, which is what we are familiar with, like beta zero plus uh, X beta one. But um, they also talk about how we can use like polynomials modeling instead of just using a linear regression. Then moving beyond, I have not read those chapters, but they have all these like polynomial regressions. Uh, they also have regression spline, the smoothing one, then local regression and generalized active models. Uh, then, they also have like tree based decision trees, the Bayesian additive regression tree. That's the one that I really wanted to learn. <laughs> then also some like machine learning support vector machines or deep learning. Then survival analysis. This and towards the end, I think chapter thirteen you have like unsupervised learning where you talk about uh, K means clustering or hierarchical clustering or PCA principal component analysis. So uh, what are the types of problems? You have this car, uh, identify the risk factors for some types of cancer. Then you predict whether someone will have a heart attack, yes or no. So this is more of a classification problems. Then email spam detection, yes or no. That's also a classification type. Then you want to classify a tissue sample into several cancer cells based on the gene. This is also a classification of establish a relationship, this is more of a more of a regression kind of question. Salary and demographic variables. So you use salary or you use demographic variables to predict the salary, which yeah, is a regression. Uh, these data sets, they have a lot. 
you don't have to know all those data sets. So as we go through the chapters, you just you can come back to the chapter one, read through the descriptions of what each database covers, or else you can just as we use the data set, uh, as you go through the lab, I think you can just get the header or do a summary of your data set, then you roughly will know what are the variables inside. But obviously it's better if you just read through a descriptions of what your data sets consist of. This is a shorter version of description. There's a longer version of descriptions in chapter one. So this is the wage data. So they are predicting a continuous quantitative output. So it's a regression problem that we use for chapter three. I heard that this data is a bit controversial as in they are very, um, I think someone mentioned it as in, in it's very racist cloud data. I'm not sure about this one. <laughs> uh, so we have a few stock market, all those kinds. Then the meeting videos, this is for cohort one. I think they are posted here. But the rest, you can just go back to uh, useful resources here. Then you go to the YouTube channel, the playlist, where we have the one for cohort two and as well as cohort three. So that's all. Ah, we have someone sign up for chapter two. <laughs> Thanks, Rose. <laughs> uh... So classification, I will check back with John whether we are having presentation on this March 14th. Because I need to check whether when is the daylight saving in US. Because I, I'm not living in the US, so I have to check that. Uh, but if it's a daylight saving week, we will not have a meeting that week because it will totally mess up everyone time zone. Uh, and what else? Ah, yeah. So now we have to discuss about since we have someone presenting on week two. So it's up to you, Rose, whether you want to do like um, one week theory, one week lab, or you feel that you can cover everything chapter two in one week. Um, Because I believe chapter two, we don't really, we have very basic lab, the, those very basic R codes. So I'm not sure if everyone wants to go through the chapter two lab, but it's up to you, Rose, to decide. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at the material and, and maybe try to prep it so that we can We'll, we'll try to maybe do it in one week. And if it turns out we want to go slower, then we can sort of let it stretch into two. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> it's, it's up to you. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, today I think we'll just end early because chapter one is nothing much. <laughs> it's just so hey, it's just warm out, getting to know one another. Ah, yeah, Rahul. <laughs> I had a couple of questions. Uh, I did uh, attend uh, initial couple of sessions from the cohort one. And uh, at the time, uh, they were, I think, were doing labs, uh, which is at the end of the, the chapter, as well as some of the problem statements. So uh, are we thinking of doing that as well? I see. You mean, will we be? having a discussion on the chapter on one week and lab on the other week? Because that's what when you, one is doing. When you say lab is uh, the exercises at the end of the chapter or there is a lab part as well, or we consider both as a kind of lab? Ah, okay. So towards the end of the chapters, there are exercises, but there are two types of exercises. One is the theoretical exercises where they just test your theory. <laughs> And the other one where is the applied one where you do the lab. Okay, okay, got it. 
Yeah. So, and, uh, so for the labs, there are actually two options that you guys need to decide whether you want to use the base R one, because the book codes, the codes that they provided in the book are actually in base R. But I think some people are more comfortable, or maybe some people are, they want to learn tidy models. That's why if you want to do tidy models, we can do it, or we can do it half half, like maybe half of the session we just rush through the base R, then do the rest in tidy models. It's really up to you guys, like what you guys want to do. And what would you be would uh, other folks be interested if someone wants to do it in Python? I I have I've worked I have some experience in base R. I have no experience in tidy modeling, uh, but uh, uh, I'm also trying, to, I'm trying to learn Python with this. So I was wondering whether if someone wants uh, to just for one or two session or like if uh, whenever I'm presenting, but I'm fine with uh, if we want to, if no one is interested in that and folks wants to learn R. Uh, I think it's up to them, but would that be too much to learn about? I think half of us here are like in the tiny models book club. Then, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure that like, will it be too much where we have to do like base R, tidy models, then <laughs> Python. <laughs> but this is the website you guys go to if you want the codes in base R. Then the other one is the Emil's website where, um, Emil's website will be this one where all the codes for tidy models will be here. Yeah, so this is where you get the codes for tidy models, then equivalent codes for base R here. Okay, uh, I love it. Ah, I think like R Studio for <laughs> Yeah, R Studio is a very convenient. <laughs> um, okay, so, so we will just leave it up to the presenter for the week, whether they want to do like both base R and tiny models or just base R. So it's really up to the presenter. But um, all the resources that I've mentioned earlier will be available in the link. So even though tiny models might not be covered in that week, you guys can still go through the chapters yourself. So the best is uh, maybe we will read the chapter before the meeting. So we will have something to contribute towards the discussion. So you just making ourselves be have a set schedule so we will come prepared for discussion. <laughs> Uh, any other thoughts? Anyone wants to contribute anything else? Any ideas or how we can make the meeting more meaningful or make it more fun? This is my first time here. Maybe Rose the, or the other Rose can, <laughs> the two Roses can say something about their experience about book, book clubs or things like that. Ah. Oh, this is this is my first um, R for Data Science book club too, actually. <laughs> oh, <So> okay. <laughs> I've, I've done I've done a lot of R stuff, but uh, relatively new to the R for DS community. So this is my first book club here. And okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we are all newbies here. I guess Mei Ling might be the most yeah, it's, the senior uh, of us. Um, it's usually quite casual, like. Like we don't have a set rules of what to do or what not to do. Like, like you might like because you have to understand it's like pandemic. Everyone has their own things ongoing. So even though you might not read the chapter the week, you can still join the meeting. Then you can just rewatch the YouTube video later on. So it doesn't mean like like we encourage people to come prepared, but you know, things might happen. You might be very busy that week. Then you just have that one hour for the R book club. Then just join, like you don't really have to prepare. 
then if you decided, let's say um, you are signing up for the presentation, then you decided that something really bad happening or you couldn't cope, then just let me know. Then we will try. We will still have the meeting, but I think I will just cover up your presentation for that week. So no worries like, if things really happen. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing to be stressed about. It's like nothing fixed. <laughs> Any other questions? I'm good here. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's see if anyone sign up. <laughs> yeah. Please do sign up. I think classification. Oh, um, I forgot. Quick question. So the, for the week of March fourteenth, uh, mm. I tried to sign up sign up for uh, chapter four, but you said we, we might change that week. I, so I removed my name. I, I don't know what's the oh, you, you, drill there. You, I'm not sure. So um, I have to check when is the daylight saving in US or maybe I can check it very quick. So if we have daylight saving on that week, uh, March 14, then we will not have a meeting on that week. Okay. So, so Google if, if says, you are signing up, if even though you are signing up for chapter four, so we might push your presentation back by a week. Okay, so it might be like instead of 14, 21, it would be 21, 20, 28. First, yeah, 21st and 28. Okay, that's good. Anyway, I'm in for chapter four. So one ah, quick question. Great. I have is um, because it seems like we'll often split the chapters, like, you know, cover it over two weeks. Um, is the idea to have the same person always cover like, but like when you sign up, you don't sign up for a week, you sign up for like a chapter. So you would do both weeks associated with the chapter or is it more based on like one person does one, might do one half of the chapter and then the other person, another person might pick up and do like the second half of the chapter. I followed Rose's footstep for chapter two. So that's why I signed up for chapter four. I have no idea. <laughs> I just saw Celine further down in the spreadsheet. So <laughs> I did what was already there too. <laughs> so usually for like bigger book club, like because for cohort one, we have more participants. So they actually split the chapters. So they have two presenters for one chapter. But because we are a smaller cohort, so that's why when you sign up, you sign up for the whole chapters. But you don't have to do that. <laughs> if you're just able to squeeze like, time for one presentation, that's fine as well. You just leave the other one empty. <laughs> yeah. Yes, everyone is busy, so... <laughs> I also was sort of thinking, you know, if I'm going to the trouble to prepare a presentation for like the first week for the chapter, like it would not be very hard to also be ready to do like the exercises for it. Like if I'm already going to read the material closely. So it seemed like it would be easier to do both presentations for one chapter um, rather yeah. than to end up doing like two different ones. I don't know, but yeah, everybody's situation is going to be different. <laughs> Yeah, I think this cohort like, is slightly different from the first one, as in you, you do not need to prepare the slides because for the first cohort, we actually, when we did the presentation, we have to write out the notes. So for this one, you can just use the existing notes that we have. So unless you have anything to add on, then maybe you can make a minor edit then you just commit it, then I think John or Jonathan will approve it later on. Mm. So, so I think less work as in, <laughs> you don't have to prepare the slides. <laughs> Anything else? If no, then I think we will have the rest of the chat. I think we have the main things covered. We have the rest of the chats on Slack. Then I'll see you guys next week. <laughs>